Hello, everyone, and welcome out to The Good, The Bad, and The Geeky, a podcast where I sit down with some of my friends in the local Columbus, Ohio theater, film an improv scene, and talk a bunch of geeky stuff. Some of it good, ooh, some of it bad, but all of it definitely geeky. If you enjoy our programs, be sure to subscribe to our show on Apple Podcasts and to leave a review, or subscribe and leave a review wherever you can get podcasts. Our official sponsor of the show is Audible. With over 200,000 titles to choose from, get one audiobook and two Audible originals each month included with your trial, even once your trial ends and normal membership begins. How rad is that? Best part is you own your library, meaning you keep the books even if you cancel with Audible, plus you get easy exchanges. So don't love a book? Swap it out for free anytime. Sign up for your free trial over at audibletrial.com forward slash goodbadgeeky. Download the Audible app and start enjoying your new audiobook. Also, support for this podcast has been made possible by our Kickstarter backers, Ashley Carson, Catherine Ranella, Wooz, Yannick, Doug Poeta, Christopher LeBlanc, Andrew, Kenny, Jerome Wetzel, Casey May, Anonymous, Tavia Ordway, Anthony Portillo, Jen and Brian Petrie, Guest 16554255418, Laura Spires, Kimberly Barr, Kyle Jepson. We here at The Good, The Bad, and The Geeky just wanted to offer the following discretion that this episode was pre-recorded in the last few months of 2019. In this episode, I am here with... Amanda. And we're going to sit down and talk about Charlie's Angels on this episode of The Good, The Bad, and The Geeky. And a word of warning that there will be spoilers aplenty, not just on Charlie's Angels, but pretty much anything we may talk about, so listener beware. And if there's anything you want to say about Charlie's Angels, join in on our conversation by interacting with us on social media and email. Twitter and Instagram is username goodbadgeeky, or email me at goodbadgeeky at gmail.com. We may read your comment on the show. All right, enough said on my end. Will, roll them. So on this episode, we're going to talk about Charlie's Angels. I'm going to do – so I I'm, I feel like, right, because we're technically in off-season, I'm yeah. doing different things with my intro, which is if I can remember to do it first off. Sometimes I don't remember to do this. Well, I'll go and ask people. Yeah. I'm not going to ask you what you thought of the movie. I'll say, first off, what do you think of the Charlie's Angels franchise going into the movie? Oh, okay. So the, as a good – so yeah. hate it, love it, not really seen any of them. Well, I have to know that's not in your case, but – or my case either. But yeah. – you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that's what I'm going to throw at you first. Okay. Is like, what were your, what, were, what was your, not expectation, but what, what was your thoughts on the franchise or IP going, before yeah, yeah. going into it? So going into it, I had watched, I mean, seen like Charlie's Angels reruns as a kid in the 90s because reruns yeah. were on a lot, especially like. Nick at Night. Yeah, Nick at Night or like during the day, during the summer, you like know, on like TBS, TBS or something like WGN, that. and WGN. It would always yeah. be a hooker, hooker. Was it uh, William Shatner's Hooker T.I. or something? T.J. Hooker. T.J. Hooker. There was a T in there, God damn it. <laughs> I like Hooker T.I. And there was a dot. And there was a dot on top of a J or an I. <laughs> T.J. Hooker and uh, Perry Mason and then usually Charlie's Angels. Yeah. yeah. So I definitely had seen like Charlie's Angels as a kid. And I always thought like, okay, that's cool. Like female spies. But even as a child, I was like, oh, this is so... Like, this is pure eye candy for the men. Yeah, it was so exploitative, like, just entirely. And then, so the, like, Lucy Liu, Cameron Diaz. Mm. Dun, 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 Lucy Liu. Dun, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. And uh, Cameron, Drew yeah. Barrymore one. Like, the first one I remember seeing and, like, enjoying it. But again, it felt like this is being made for men. To- A little bit. I also kind of feel, too, uh, not to step on your thing. Uh, we'll, we'll get back. Though I also feel like that Scooby Doo and the Brady Bunch were also kind of making fun of the property at the same time. Yeah, a little bit like they were embracing it, but also mocking it a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. definitely. Like a very Brady, or the Brady Bunch movie and a very Brady oh. sequel. They were totally mocking it. Oh my God! Yeah. It, yeah. yeah, and it wasn't as mocking. Moesha, but Moesha, Moesha. There. I watched that movie a lot. That's a great, honestly. I, I I haven't seen the Brady sequel as much, but I remember the Brady Bunch being just an actual really good movie. Well, it's a good satire. Like that's the thing. Yeah. Is, yeah. Well, if I, I still feel like James Gunn Scooby Doo, the it, I would love to see the rated R uncut version where like you know 
they actually lean hard, harder into the marijuana pot jokes that Velma's gay and like oh yeah that's the one where like on the plane like shaggy falls in love with a girl named mary jane right and right and mary jane's still in there but okay. they they and, but that's what i'm saying like they dance around it already but yeah. it's way more evident and like yeah like there was a whole love scene love song that velma sang for i think mary jane oh. and it became a, a weird love triangle between them because they always said velma and shaggy were a thing but they never really sh- no no that's a weird thing that's been going so, around <laughs> my face was like no, no, there's a weird face. I don't, I don't ever remember that watching the countless hours of Scooby Doo reruns. Yeah, right. But Cartoon Network every freaking day. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently they put that into the new show or one of the new shows. They have like forty right now. Yeah. Mystery. I think it's Mystery Incorp- Mystery Inc. Incorporated. Okay. Where it's uh, it's actually like a serial storyline throughout the whole season. Oh, I'm like, I feel like we should call one of my nephews. They can describe I, it to us in detail, I'm I watched, sure. Before they take it off Netflix, I watched like half of the first season and I was like, oh my God, it's like Lost, but with Scooby-Doo. Not shitty Lost for people who don't like Lost. I love Lost. But yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. know, where it's just like every episode, it's like, well, what, what? what? That ended on a weird twist. Mm-hmm. Like, and how does that lead to, oh my God, you mean the original Mr. Inc. was their parents? Oh my God, you mean Velma's... Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, but they Velma kind of had a crush on Shaggy in that one. I was just like, oh, great, they're finally they're doing an homage to the the rumor that they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they they do that in the movie too, and I think it's on the deleted scene. But and then if you watch Scooby Doo two, for me that's like pure like if was that Monsters Unleashed? Monsters Unleashed, but that that to me was actually what I wanted from the first movie. I enjoyed the first movie a lot, but it was a satire over Scooby Doo. Yeah. The, the second one was like a love letter to Scooby Doo, where it's like all the monsters come to life, and they have to actually defeat the monsters, and it's one oh, of those. Okay. And so like they bring out like, all I the think old I've monsters. Only seen clips of because Scooby Doo two bad. came out when I was in college. Yeah, I think so. And the first one came out either late high school or early college when I was still living. Two thousand two, two thousand three. Okay, so late I high feel. school for me. So because I remember I still lived at home when the first one came out, and my sister Faith was obsessed with it and she's 10 years younger than me of so course. she like watched it all so the time so you probably just fucking hated scooby doo i i <laughs> well, was the just... movie the tv show all of it i mean it. i loved the tv show growing up but like yeah she would watch that movie the live action movie all the time and so yeah by the time the second one came out i was like nah i'm, I'm good well, like see, i'd probably watch it now as an adult so, like if so, it came out now but at so, yeah. So, so this is a sad thing, and, and this will kind of tie into this, but if anything that's done on an IP property, this tends to lean more towards cartoons, classic cartoons like Yogi Bear, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Mm-hmm. They are not great movies, but like they are exactly what the property is. And yeah, they sure. And they don't – now, some of them do a good job, better job than others at reacquainting themselves with the era. Like the first Scooby-Doo did that, and then it's like that point they realized they knew what – the others needed to be, which is like, it just needs to be a giant Scooby-Doo episode. And that's what the second, with maybe real monsters. And that's what two was. It was like, mm-hmm. well, if you didn't get that in the first one, cause we were doing like a Brady Bunch thing, here's like, oh my God, the night from the, from the opening credits and the big scary glop monster. Oh no. Yeah. Now the guys here? that are in the costumes are right over there. The monsters are right over there. What the fuck? Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of neat. Kind of right. cool. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, Usually properties like I remember I watched Yogi Bear and everyone was like it's the worst movie ever and I was just like it's a Yogi Bear movie like <laughs> what were you the, expecting? what were you expecting like <laughs> like uh, like I don't condone the gentleman but no one reviews the Rocky and Boinkle movie so I watched the Nostalgia Critics video review of it his video essay and oh. he is not a good dude so oh, okay. I do not I'm support like, him I'm not familiar with him um, Lindsay Ellis uh, the video blogger she came she was the Nostalgia Chick which was a spinoff of that but he was an asshole and oh it, it, treated her a, badly and treated I, a I'm bunch like, of people I've badly I've heard of her <laughs> yeah no, she's amazing yeah. Um, her thing on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is like blood is like life to me because uh, it's exactly I was like this is yes thank you I'm like um, going to YouTube <laughs> <Do>. subscribe <laughs> um, but no the Nostalgia Chick but he was just like and they were doing a weird mix of because they do satire on that a little bit too of what, of the review. Okay. So it's like the bit in that was it was like Scagliari, you know, he, he was Scagliari and he was talking about like why is Amadeus is so oh, hated? Salieri. Salieri, thank you. I don't know what the fuck I said. Nope. Uh, <laughs> it, it just wasn't it. That's all I it's know. It's okay. Everybody uh, drink. Salieri. Right? Salieri. Salieri. Uh, F. Murray Abraham. Exactly. Uh, That's all we need to know. <laughs> uh, and Tom Hulse or Tom Hulsey. Hulse. Hulse. 
Hulse? Yeah. I think it's Hulse. Yeah. The guy from Animal House is how I really know him. Uh, <laughs> I was say, yeah. and, and Hunchback. Uh, Tom Hulse, who plays Amadeus, they were saying like, you know how Amadeus is considered to be a bit of a drunkard, alcoholic, but a prodigy? Yes. They were saying that well, Rocky Boinkle was a hated movie. It's the worst shit pile of movies ever made. And then he was just becoming F. Murray Abraham. It's like, but it wasn't that bad. Like he was, that was how they were framing it. And it was actually kind of funny, but he's like, it's a Rocky and Bullwinkle movie. Like some of the puns were good. Some of the puns were bad, but that's what the original show was. <laughs> like, and the cameos, they made sense, but then they didn't make sense. That's what the original show was. And I was like, he's like, I kind of enjoyed it. I was just like, thank you. <laughs> like, you know, it's not, would I have liked it to transcend in every, like George of the Jungle where everyone just fucking loved it. And yes. if you watch it now, people just go like, that was just a good movie. It's not a great movie. I rewatched it. It's Rocky Boyle, in my opinion, is better than you have Brendan Fraser and Thomas. What's his name? Thomas. C. Thomas. No, not C. Thomas. Oh, Howell. the guy from Sideways. Yeah, and um, Ned and Stacy. Thomas Hayden Church. Thomas Hayden Church. Yeah. He has those luscious bad guy pipes and, and just the narrator jokes are it, some of the puns are great. But that's what I'm saying. Like, but in contrast, and nobody dies. They just get really badly hurt. <laughs> they went, no, right. <laughs> Sorry, no, I watch no, George of my... the Jungle a lot. <laughs> I, it, I think uh, I think it was on Netflix or Amazon Prime. And I just remember I watched it. I was just like, man, this is. I mean, it's good, but like, it's not great either. But everyone's just like, oh, I love George of the Jungle. I was like, do you? <laughs> Have you seen it recently? Please also watch Rocky and the Boinkle. The Rocky and the Boinkle. Let me know. Let me know what you think. The Rocky and the Boinkle. Let me talk to the Rocky and the Boinkle. Oh, boy. No, um, but so properties in general. I'm tying oh, yeah. back. I, I see. Yeah. I got you. I'm on. I'm um, on. Some of them, either they go satire or they, they try to be that. And sometimes they try to go beyond what they were, mm -hmm. which that's not bad because that's nice actually in some cases because you're trying <laughs> yeah um you know it's not like men in black international where you're like what the fuck are all you people doing oh i missed that one because i still oh, was sort of like on a walker at that point yeah so. you, know, you are so lucky oh. like that's not even a 299 rental to me oh man which uh you know i'll just wait till it streams somewhere for free. so my opinion this year overall has been ips usually have sucked this year unless it's marvel yeah. Like, I like Godzilla a lot, but it wasn't a mainstream movie. Like, it was made for the Godzilla fans, and it should have been made for both. Okay. Like, Which I still haven't seen yet, because I was very much... Yep, you were... Surgery recovery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I enjoy that movie. Which I was so disappointed, because I really wanted to see you and Scott see it together and oh nerd my out. God. Oh, my oh. God. It was so... Uh, yeah, that was... It was beautiful. And I, I, I still watch it. Like, but again, it's, it's like when I was younger... I turn on Aladdin. I don't watch Aladdin. I, oh my I fast God, forward I just... to the genie. It's the same thing in Godzilla. You fast forward to the monster fights because you don't want to see Kyle Chandler talk. <laughs> yeah. But like you said, the IP, like, because I just. No, Aladdin was not. I just watched Aladdin. It's okay. The... Oh, I hated it. I, it just made me. So... I liked Naomi Scott coming back around to Charlie's Angels. Yep. She was, she was great. Good. And then everything else, I was like. I thought the kid Ugh. who played Aladdin was good. Um, and to me, he the got little like wooden Disney kid to me sometimes. But, but I also feel like the choice of director was quite horrible. Yes. Like, why, why would, would you, you direct pick Guy Ritchie for Aladdin? Like the one only Guy Ritchie shot in the whole movie is that. And it feels fucking weird is where they just do that transition to him in the tower going, uh oh. And then they pan back and you see the, the palace on fire or whatever or the bird. I don't know. Bad shit's happening at the palace. And it's like. Well, that's a Guy Ritchie shot. Where was he in the fucking rest of this movie? And I remember, do you oh, remember the I'm... bullshit where everyone's like, Jafar looks super hot. I was like, well, Jafar can't fucking act. Uh, <laughs> like, so just... <laughs> I'm a part of Lady Pod Squad, hashtag Lady Pod Squad on the, uh... social media. And in our Slack channel, if you're a lady podcaster, get in touch. I can hook you up. But in our Slack channel, as soon as he got cast, it was literally like my friend Meg, who's my co-host on Pod Appetit, yeah. was like, Oh my God, hot Jafar! I'm so here for hot Jafar. Well, okay, even I was a little bit like, yeah, hot Jafar. She sent cool. pictures and stuff, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, all and right, if you look at right. Aladdin, you're like, oh, he looks kind of plain. I mean, nothing they wrong with a that. Guy who is hot, just look. Eh. No, no, in, a, in the well, movie. I okay. Here is my thing. Watching my my wife didn't like it either, and I was just like, I wouldn't mind watching it again because I I wasn't I didn't hate it. 
I know, I know. That's no, no, weird no. for me. I'm not having no. But I just remember when he started dancing during that. Like Aladdin did, not the genie. Oh, okay. When Aladdin started dancing, I was like, Aladdin can dance. Okay, this is clearly not a him problem. It's a whatever everyone else is telling him to do problem <laughs> on the screen because he wasn't bad. The girl who nine and I liked actually the subplot with her and you know doing. Uh, where, where she's like, I want to help my people. And oh, I was just like, that's actually a really clever subplot. She wants subplot. to be the sultan. Which, yeah, cool. And actually, I felt like it made sense for the movie, but I felt like there should have been some other scenes, not with her, but like the dad or some other shit that would have kind of... But also, Jafar was just weak in that. Like, Jafar was not menacing to me. Like, that was another no, weird thing. No, cartoon Jafar was so much scarier. I mean, not just because I was a child when I first saw it, but oh, like... No. So like, much more and I'm menacing. sorry, you have Alan Tudyuk as Iago, and all he says is like four words. I think I say four, and I point out three, oh, three. three fingers. But no, he doesn't even say like like. It's like yeah. the bird in in fucking Moana. Oh, that's Alan Tudyuk. Big fucking deal. He doesn't. He just go. Bark, bark, bark. Well, okay, it makes I sense don't. in Moana because the animation is like he's the John Ratzenberger to Pixar. Lately, He's and I'm for fine Disney with that. animation, but, and they wanted to get him involved, but not whitewash like one of the characters. So he's the chicken. Cool. I mean, I guess I just feel like that's still a waste of Alan Tudyuk. Like at one point, let the chicken talk or something. That doesn't. No, that's bad. Don't ever listen to me, Disney, on that one. I'm just <laughs> saying, like, <laughs> it's just let the chicken talk. Uh, well, I mean, you let fucking everything else talk for God's sakes. I mean, you let you even let the little tattoo guys start doing shit, and it's like, what? Okay, sure. I, I I still think the water in that looks like the abyss alien. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Nathan when you need him? I know. Oh Jesus. Uh so in terms of okay, so I derailed I completely derailed you by the way. So you were you were talking about uh I don't even remember what you were talking, I about. Was talking about. I cut on satire and that's You cut what on I satire because we were talking about the early 2000s yes charlie's yes, angels movies thank, thank you thank so you. which i know that drew barrymore was like a producer on and stuff and she wanted to have fun with it yeah and i and i get that and you can tell they had fun oh yeah you can tell they had nice. fun the thing that everybody loves about like cameron diaz dancing around in her underwear even then i didn't underwear. like i just uh, whatever like also i'm very sorry dear listeners if you adore lucy Liu. No, I adore Lucy Liu. Oh, She's okay. awesome. But you're talking about Cameron Diaz. Cameron so. Diaz. I've never found her to be the comedic genius that people tout her to be. She's a good straight man. She's not a good comedic person. Because I thought she was... I still think of her performance in The Mask as surprisingly simple. But like... Yeah. It's like... But decent. Like, to enough, it's like, well, she's got some chops. And I don't know who the hell she is. Like... And I barely know who Jim Carrey is. I and... don't mind her as an actress. Like, I actually like her in Being John Malkovich. But she also gets to really play acting. against t- type. She's yeah, she gets to really that. act yeah. in that. And uh, yeah, so I'm not as enamored with her as, say, my husband is, who well, I've seen every rom com that she's been in since we started I, dating. Because it's not really I'm a rom com. It's like a, a dirty, like Porky's. I like Sweetest Thing with with the three girls. It was yeah, uh, yeah. Summer Blair, her, and Christina Applegate. And she's not really the love interest in that. I think it's more Christina Applegate or Summer Blair. Well, no, they all kind of have it, but like it's more about the girls' friendships, and mm-hmm. I I enjoyed it. I was I think I won a free pass to that. I was just like, well, this movie's gonna be shit, and I was like, I would like I laughed out loud through the whole thing, and then when it bombed, I was like, well, that's sad. I had a fun time. It's not, but it's not good. It's not like the like, Hangover yeah. was good, like mm-hmm. like across the board. This was just like no no no. It's a funny bad movie. <laughs> See, for me, so, the sweetest thing I enjoyed the the behind the scenes stuff with the writers oh because kate walsh was involved with it with one of her friends really and they (coughs) because i watched all the special features because we have a mutual uh, acquaintance who loves that movie and made me watch it at one point and i watched all the (laughs) the extras and Uh, yeah and i was like oh i'm here for like kate walsh being weird and like she was hilarious well i'm sorry you have a song about blowjobs from the women's perspective, it's it, it's it's very funny. Yeah, I, I, I thought which I because you you get the men's a hundred percent all the time. It yeah, was, I don't know, it was nice. Which okay, so perspective. Yeah, we'll talk about leading into back to Charlie's Angels, Charlie's and not Angels. blowjob song. No, that's okay. <sighs> Instantly, I think of Garfunkel and 
oats and hand job which is the perfect song to explain hand job bland job i don't understand job. job i'm glad those two have found fame i just wish they found it as garfunkel and oats like their big I success loved their show and it, it was, was all good. like what six I like episodes their, and... i fucking like their youtube clips even oh, like yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. got them to and grand they had been acting for a while like i remember watching pushing daisies and she's like the flower girl that gets killed mm. and the daisy in like yeah, the first yeah. season i was just like oh hey that's that's ricky lindholm or ricky, whatever name F- ricky fucking lindholm is in knives out and i didn't even know until i saw it anyway uh, th- sorry yeah ricky lindholm female perspective so yes i remember like in the early 2000s enjoying the first charlie's angels movie in particular yeah. the second one came out like what, what, almost like eight years later or something? the second one it was a I would while. I have to double check, but it was definitely later, and I don't remember <coughs> that one as much. But I don't know. I, I still always sort of felt like, okay, they're for fun, but it still feels like Ooh. a lot of the time, and I think it has to do with the direction is from the male gaze, not the female gaze. Yeah, Full Throttle came out in 2003, while the other one came out in 2000. Jesus. Okay, so only three years apart. I thought it was longer than that, to be honest. I mean, that's... Damn. I knew it was early 2000s, but those were both... Who directed those ones? Mick G directed, I think, the first oh, one. Oh, yes. Uh, the second one, though... Who the fuck did direct that one? Uh, cast... No, Mick G directed the second one, too? He must have been in decline. I just remember it was like, Mick G, where the fuck's he doing these days? Um, uh, last thing I know he did was Terminator Salvation, but that was okay, and, 10 and, years and, ago. In retrospect, uh, that was actually a decent movie, <laughs> I, I thought. I, like It was my first date movie with Jeremy. Aww. You got to see Arnold Schwarzenegger kick Christian Bale's ass before he killed him. <laughs> oh, so... We're dancing around this movie heavily. Um, we'll get into it. We'll get into yeah. it. Well, because we're doing the, the 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 background, the IP. But I I felt yeah. very much like Charlie's Angels and Charlie's Angels Full Throttle was while it was produced by Drew Barrymore and her producing partner, it still felt a lot like it was from the male gaze, especially like from the camera's point yeah. of view. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. And and I'm not gonna lie, as a guy. I, especially back then when I wasn't woke yet, um, I was excited. So, I don't know. I think they're fine. I know they're beloved by some people, those Charlie's Angels movies. Oh, yeah. And then they tried to reboot the television show a few years ago. Yeah, it did not work. It lasted one season. Yeah. And did did it even show the full season or did it only show like three episodes that, or now that's the question i don't know a cat burglar a car thief and a dirty cop get a chance to turn their lives rachel, around rachel what are what's her name from jessica jones i uh, minka kelly rachel taylor yeah rachel taylor and annie mm-hmm, not saying that here i'll let you try that one because if not people have to take a drink yeah it's hard to say alonze i'm not sure yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Did you her. just say Alonzi? <laughs> Alonzi. Sorry, yeah. that was a like Minka Kelly. I know, and Rachel Taylor. I knew her because she had had a small role on Grey's Anatomy at that point in time, and so I feel like I watched the first episode of it, and I was just like, eh, you know, it was one of those. There was better TV, and I know it didn't. Oh yeah, take off. Well, who the fuck's Charlie in this one? That's the set. Like, there's no Charlie on IMDb that I'm seeing yet. But I will say, well, because uh, Charlie's technically just a voice. It doesn't matter. He's fucking. It's called Charlie's Angels. Like, well, it's who's Bosley is. I don't. I know which. <laughs> well, this guy. Who, uh, well, so John Bosley in the 2011 show was Ramon Rodriguez, um, but right two down, uh, or if Isaiah Mustafa, who I think was the. Old Spice old guy, Spice guy yeah. and then John Terry, who played Jack's dad and Lost. Both of them would have been, in my opinion, just looking at this, not remembering the show that well. They would have been way better choices for, but they went for with Bosley. like super hot Latino actor. And I felt like they're trying to, I don't know, man. Like Isaiah Mustafa, he's he, I he just has the voice of Bosley. Isaiah Mustafa, does. I like, I enjoy. You him. need someone kind of iconic. That sounds iconic, looks iconic. Like in this one, you have Elizabeth Banks, 
You have the what's the one guy that's on ABC Good Morning America? He's a Bosley. You have oh Michael Strahan. You have a uh, Digimon. Demon Houston. Hansu. Hansu. You also and then you have fucking Patrick Sir Pat Stu. Yeah. You have Pat Stu. No, and- I let. I liked that idea and that concept of how Bosley is like a level in the Townsend thing and like it's yes. their lieutenant. I liked that. I idea. did too. Uh, I liked it a lot. So, uh, any, any other thing on IP stuff going into there before we can? Sorry. Cause... No, that was basically it. Like when I saw the trailer for this, yeah. I was like, oh, another Charlie's Angels. But then I saw the cast involved and like that Elizabeth Banks wrote and directed. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to give it a chance. And then you popped it up on like the Facebook group for yeah. GBG. And I was like, yes. And I was like, someone else is going to be down here. Nope. Just me. Just you. Uh, so I'm not going to lie. It was a fight for me to see the movie like mentally. I because. Yes. Um, so after we recorded this other podcast, I had to go and I was talking to one of the people that was there just in general and we were talking and I was like oh shit I, I gotta go mm-hmm. so we we stopped and but it was just like a mental thing even before I was like I guess I gotta get tickets to see last uh, or Charlie's Angels I just two movies in one weekend's a little much for me I'm too old I'm too old and I was like but do I want to see Charlie's Angels like I really debated like canceling and I was like but but no because I do want to see Charlie's Angels mm-hmm. but then I don't because I like Elizabeth Banks but I, I just Charlie's Angels and there's nothing wrong with Charlie's Angels, but it's just like I should say IP wise. Yeah, I have for a, a million photos posed with other women with like the Charlie's Angels oh, like finger there guns. There are dudes who do that. I'm like we we did it. My sisters and I like did it for a family uh, Christmas photo shoot like a couple years like, ago. It, yeah, it, that and I think the door closing at the end of The Godfather are like some of the most reproduced Repro- type yes. of like. In TV shows and other movies, like someone's always fucking referencing it. Yeah. Granted, the Charlie's Angel thing is more of like a posy, jokey thing, but yes. but it's still cool enough that it's it's part of the zeitgeist. Oh, totally. It's huge. I feel like people who don't even necessarily know what Charlie's Angels is yeah. still know what that is. And so for me going into, I was like, I don't know, but I enjoyed it a lot. Okay. And it makes me sad that the movie is like it flopped already by the time we're recording this. It's opening day after opening weekend. It just did not do good. That also makes me sad. And it's so funny because I feel like this is another one where I don't know that they marketed the film correctly. Well, I feel like they just stopped marketing it. Like the girls are going out on the talk show circuit, but that's it. I'm not seeing any ads anywhere else. There were a bunch of ads at like the beginning of the summer. Right. And I'm just like, no, it because needs to keep going. I feel like I saw an ad for it when Jeremy and I went and saw John Wick Chapter 3 or something. You know, like... Peak it, Wick is like I, well, I like to call it. Sorry. <laughs> and so, you know, I definitely saw ads, but the movies that I've seen in the last few mm, weeks, yeah. I haven't seen any ads for it. I or... remember seeing an ad for it in front of, like, It Chapter 2, but it was around that time. It was like a month and a half, like beginning of August where it was starting to... Yeah. go off it wasn't well, starting to stop and like you said i also i because i had choir rehearsal last night and mm-hmm. after singing for two hours my throat was killing me yeah and i was like oh pardon me. i just want to go home and lay down I did you like, watch you watched it this morning didn't you no i went last night you went last night I, I got you i had yeah i had a doctor's appointment and work today i got you so i went last night right after choir rehearsal and i was like Oh, like I was tired and I was like, oh, I don't want to cancel, but I don't know if I want to see this movie right now. Right. Isn't that weird? Like that's what the, the feeling that the movie gives you. But it was but so I good. I had so much fun with it. It's not perfect. The CGI and the photoshopping were bad. Oh, the photoshopping. The only part that bothered me with that was the part where they show the other angels. Like that was the one where the, I was like, where "That's they bad." Photoshopped uh, like Patrick I mean, Stewart. Patrick and Stewart when, into old angels was done so badly. I'm like, this. I'm sorry, this movie had a budget, right? Like, why does your Photoshop but, look like it's from an '80s movie? But, but can I? But can I say though, outside of that, it was the first time I felt visually invested in a Charlie's Angels movie. Yeah, like, I liked Elizabeth Banks' direction. Like, Mick G. It feels like Mick G. In general, and this is no offense to Mick G., but like. He is the closest thing I think we have, and not a very good one, 
to be clear, of mm -hmm. Edgar Wright, where he does the fast cuts and that kind of thing okay. for pacing. But Edgar Wright's, there's, I feel like there's more craft involved with his. Mm -hmm. and, and also he does, now Graham McGee does that in Chuck and other stuff too. That's why, but Chuck abandoned it after like the first few episodes. Cause, oh, okay. Because McGee directed the pilot and they base everything after the pilot, the visual look. Yes. But, but like Charlie's Angels kind of had that, but kind of didn't. But like, I just remember the scene where there, I call it the Thomas Crown bit. Where there's like multiple versions of the girl walking around. In, oh, in, in this one. In, in this one, yeah. Um, I call it because then Thomas Crown Affair. They do that amazing ending with the remake where I do, I, I've never seen it. No, me, no, don't tell no. Me. I'm, like, wait, 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 I'm wait, wait, so sorry. Wait, 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 I'm so sorry. Wait, wait, wait. As soon as you said the ending, I was like, nope. Oh my god, off. I've never seen either version. I know. Steven's so been that telling is, me I need to watch it, and we'll do it on my podcast at some point. I would like to be involved in that because yeah, like I just remember you and the Dooseleys. Let's do it. I just, I just remember, and this is all I'll say about the movie. I'm not spoiling it. I just remember I was like, I didn't like the original one that much with uh, what's his name from The Great Escape. I can't think of his name right now. Stephen McQueen. Steve McQueen, eh, aka sure. White Steve McQueen. Hey, what Steve McQueen? Uh, he's okay. I didn't give a sh. It was okay. I, I was like, I mean, I guess it needs to be made. The ending of that movie is so fucking epic Th to me, like at low scale, let, to be clear, I don't want to help it up too much. Yeah. Low level epic for a heist movie that it's just fuck, man. Like, even if the movie sucked up to that point, I was like, I just want to see that ending. <laughs> like, it's amazing. So to me, but it was I just remember they do that shot where she's running down the stairs and they do like a shot where the camera just goes down the stairs and it's, it just kind of tracks. And I was just like, oh. this is more fucking visually interesting. Are you talking about when Sabina is like running down the stairs to try to get to help them? Well, both. I, I feel like that was when I first noticed it is, yeah, because they get attacked in the coffee shop and she's yeah. running down. And I, the camera just kind of does like a 180 down and you watch Kristen Stewart run. And then also, like, just the way they shot that of mm -hmm. the multiple versions of uh, Naomi Scott's character with the wig. The bowl cut. The bowl, bowl cut. cut? Bowl cut. Yeah, bowl cut. Uh -huh. Which was so funny. That whole sequence it was just so well done. And yeah. it, I was like, and if people think this is a slam, I don't mean it this way. It's a Mission Impossible, like, way they did it. And I was oh, like, yeah. and I fucking loved it. I love the Mission Impossible movies. They're popcorn. But there's so much fun. The, okay. I had so much fun in that. It was just, just in that sequence I was, alone. I just want to watch it over and I over again. I was highly against Mission Impossible because I hate. <laughs> well, because of Tom Cruise. For a long time. Cause, yeah, I, yeah, I don't like Tom Cruise. The first one I thought, and eh, the second one I remember seeing. And the then it, first one you're like, eh, that's the one everyone at least just goes, no, no, the first one was really good. And you're just like, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that, to be clear. But... <laughs> Eric Sternberger and Sean Wheeler both told me last summer, no, really, Amanda, they get so much better. So I listened to them. They do. It's and aggravating. And Jeremy and I watched all of the rest of them because I had preview screening for Fallout. Yeah. And then I was like, now I fucking love that series and I will defend it to the ends of the earth. Even two? No, not two. Yeah. And, you know, it's just one, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. eight, whatever. No, no, no. Two, all the John Woo na ridiculousness. Yeah. Which is sad because it's like, I like Anthony Hopkins. No, Jeremy. I like Tom. Well, and that's why like I Tom stopped Cruise. watching it. Because I remember even seeing that movie in like eighth grade and being like, okay. Like, <laughs> okay. You know, it's bad when the best thing about your movie is, and this is bad. The best thing about your movie is the Fred Durst. Oh. I still own that soundtrack CD. I, it's a good version of the Mission Impossible theme, and I forget what they call the song, but, you know, I, let's be clear. Tom Cruise hasn't acted. That's not true. He's acted, I think, twice in the last 10 years. He did that one political movie that bombed that Robert Redford, I think, directed. Oh, um, Lions for Lambs? Yeah, I think he was the senator yes, or something. Yes, I watched it this I summer. I heard he's good. He's fine. Well, that I, movie's just... Ugh. Well, but I, but I mean, he acted in it. Because I feel like, look, sure. he's done action. He's just action guy. He's just action guy. Because that's what makes him no, money. Well, he acted in, though this may have been more than 10 years Tom, ago now. Tropic Thunder? That's yes, what, Tropic Thunder. No, that's what I was going yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's literally Tropic Thunder, Mission Impossible, action movie, man, action movie, action movie, action movie. They're good action movies for the most part. Yeah. The Lion and Lamb movie. Eh. I just remember looking. I was like, it looks like he's acting. Good for him. I don't want to watch that movie. It looks boring. It was. It's very boring. Isn't that that's sad? It's because it wasn't boring. like Glenn Close or something in that too. No, or... Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep, one of those very talented ladies. Oh no! There. Every 
everyone is in that. Michael Pena is in that movie. Michael Pena. Yeah. I watched Lions for Lambs because I listened to this podcast. This had Oscar buzz. It and they talk about Oscar movies buzz. that had Oscar buzz and never got any nominations. Yeah, well... It's a very interesting and fun podcast. <laughs> that's That makes me sad because there are some movies that do not get any love. And it's just like, no, they fucking kind of well, deserved it. Well, that's the thing. And they will distinguish, like, this had Oscar buzz and this was... Uh, and then they'll be like, no, we wish this would have. So, like... Well, it, I wonder in that case, it was just like... Because didn't Robert Redford direct it? Or... or I thought he produced in it. it. I think he did direct it. I don't know. I can't I, remember. Maybe it's just because he was in it. I just go, well, he must have directed it. But... Yeah. I just remember there was buzz on that. And I was like, well, it's because you have good actors. It was because it was good actors. That's literally, yeah, but that in Tropic Thunder. And then before that, I think the last time he acted was Magnolia. Oh, I love Magnolia. I love Magnolia, too. I would like you to see right, the You were right, directed episode. by Robert Redford. Was it really? I mm-hmm. I pulled that out of my fucking ass. I applaud you, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I have my moments. I can't re- I can't pronounce people's names anymore, and I can't remember fucking anything else, but I remember that fucking shitty Robert Redford movie that I have never that seen. That you've never seen, and I just happened to watch <laughs> Jesus. Um, well, you know, it was a busy year that year at Sundance. That's why I remember. I, that's no, it's all bullshit. I don't know. Uh, I just, I don't even think he does anything with Sundance anymore, except for he shows up, waves, gets his check, and gets his wine, and goes home. Yeah. He's and, he's like, just, and, and he's like, I don't do film anymore, but I'm in a Marvel movie and a Netflix movie. Please support them both. <laughs> um, yeah. I retired with the old man and the gun. Just kidding. Just kidding. It's real. Well, in his defense, though, it's like, but you're Robert Redford, and you're doing a Robert Redford role. You're not doing, like, fucking peanuts for the Marvel people. Right, right. <laughs> like, no, like, no. Like, I'm sure he thought that, and he was just like, well, this is coming out whenever, and he fucking forgot about it. And, and to fairness, like, a lot of people gave her shit you for You mean, him. like, Gwyneth Paltrow? I was literally going there, yeah. Gwyneth <laughs> Paltrow, like, I do feel kind of bad for her, because I was like, look... They shoot like 30 of these movies. She's getting re her contracts being renegotiated every five seconds. And if Robert's doing it, I guess I'm going to do it. And also, they're going to pay me really well. She has no idea what I fucking just, movie she's I on. I love that clip. No, we were not in that. And he's like, yeah, you yes. Were. Yeah, you yes, were. Yes, we were. <laughs> we but but like when you shoot the Avengers movies and like Spider Man's in them with there like I can under- I can understand especially it's not like she and there she are reshoots tons of reshoots essentially had a cameo in Homecoming like it wasn't right. even like it was like a- she probably thought she was doing like Civil War or something you, you, you know what I mean even though it was oh. like years after that <laughs> no but. It was probably filmed at a similar time as... That's true, when they were f- shooting other things. When they were shooting... Um, Iron Man. No, Iron Man 3 was Infinity wasn't. War. Infinity War, yeah. And... So she thought she was doing she an was Avengers probably movie. thought she was just... Yeah. Maybe it was a scene that was supposed to be in Infinity War, and they pushed it over... To, I doubt that. I doubt that. I just but, wonder if they were filmed at similar times. Oh, t- probably. But again, I, I feel for a little bit, because I was like, look, man, and there are tons of reshoots, so... And, yeah. like, if you're Mark Ruffalo and you fucking spoil everything, you don't know what you're fucking doing. Like, the only one I think who did get the full script was Evans and maybe oh. Junior, but Donnie Junior doesn't really follow the script anyway. Um, so. <laughs> RDJ is RDJ. Uh, well, well <laughs> can I say that kind of pisses me off because he refuses to do indie movies anymore, but it's like, dude, before Iron That's Man, because some of have your. Have you b- seen The Judge? The Judge is good. Oh, I couldn't. No. I enjoyed it. wasn't No, great. I know. Jessica loves it too. I. Oh, the Judge annoyed me so much. <laughs> Fair, but but I will say this, and this is okay. It's not even fucking about Charlie's Angels anymore. We will get back to we it because I will, really I want to talk about this movie. The Scorsese comments. I don't. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. When I read the op piece, I was like, "That is what I think you were saying." But now you're going back to being a grumpy old man that yells at Cloud again. He was really trying to say, even though he then doubled down in the same criticism and in the op-ed piece yeah. where he was saying, he's like, I feel like commercialism is ruining movie theaters and there's not enough room for smaller films. Like, and I remember Robert Downey Jr. saying, he's like, you know, I do a lot of big movies, but this is a small movie. Like it costs 20 million to make, which mm-hmm. still is a lot of money, but compared to these other movies, there's no smaller movie in the market anymore. So please come support the judge and there'll be other movies like that that can, whatever. And that's technically what Scorsese is saying, even though his movie is like, what, $300 million to make because of all the CGI technology, yeah. which is really fucking hysterical to me. Um, <laughs> but but here's the thing, though. At the same time, I do know what he's saying because the smaller movies that him and Spielberg probably want to do nowadays, like, they can't do them anymore. Like, Spielberg, I feel like, had to do Ready Player One because he needed something bankable to show that he right, still has so clout. Right, so that he can... I, I, go not and do that more is, of like the post and Lincoln and things like that. Right. Which, and, and I will say too, I don't think I am not, I have no confidence that, that I said that 
because it's Spielberg. He can do it's the same thing with Swiss He can say and do whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. Well, as long as it's not super bad, like killing people or whatever. But I don't think those men would do that. But I'm just saying, like, in terms of is Marvel cinema or whatever, I'm just like, well, they are. Like, they are they they fucking totally are. Like they are cinema. It's just not I think they are upset with the way that the They crowd the marketplace. The marketplace has changed. But they also influenced that. Like they did that. Right. I mean it start I mean, it started with Jaws, Raging Bull, um, Apocalypse Now, all those guys, uh, and De Palma. We're not we're kind of not leaving De Palma out, but Yeah, but those guys carried through more than De Palma. De Palma was always the indie of those guys. He was oddly enough like more indie than George Lucas. Like George Lucas did Star Wars, but he wasn't happy that he did it. And he was just like, I want to make a, a pilot picture where they're flying planes or Yeah. Well, oh, my wife George... ripped my harp out. Let's do Temple of Doom, Stephen. <laughs> hey George, I got an idea. What if they rip the guy's heart out and show it and it catches fire? And he's like, well, that's what my wife did. To me. Sorry. Uh, that was a weird fucking tangent. No, but, I, I'm with you. But, yeah, man. Like, when Scorsese said some of that, I I was just like, I, I don't agree with him. But, but in the article, he specifies that, but then he reneges what he just said. And he's like, yes, but Marvel movies are trash. He doesn't say that. He's like, what do you say? He's like, but Marvel movies... They're not, they're, but I still believe that I I agree with what I said. Is like they're not cinema because they're amusement parks. That's what he said. He yes. goes into that they're amusement parks and there's no human emotion or connection. I was like, you're okay, wrong. Yeah, that's wrong. Cause... That's wrong because fucking people gasped when Tony got run through at the end of Infinity War, and then people sobbed when their favorite hero died, and a lot of fucking heroes died. I'm like, wait, can I tell you that the movie I have cried in the most this year was Endgame, and that I from yes. the moment like. Hawkeye's family disappears and I was just like like from that point on it was just oh my silently God. weeping for two and I a mean, half three hours Infinity War wasn't this year but I just remember Infinity War is like uh, Groot's dying and then you get to Peter and you're just like oh my god but I, I don't want to go I, I don't I don't want to go uh, excuse me I'm Mr. Stark Mr. Mr. Stark, Stark I'm so I'm so scared but the thing where like I just remember the whole audience which is and I feel like this is what he like. This is what he remembers movies being for him is what they are now. But it's not in the in the vessel he wants them to be in, which is like I remember. And it was such an exhilarating. I that's why I love opening crowd weekend, especially at Lennox. Is like when Spider Man shows up in the park at the beginning. He just puts his head out. And he's yeah. like, "Hey guys, do you need help?" Like the whole audience lost their shit. It was like a, a Broadway show. Mm -hmm. And then when Tony got run through, you could just hear everyone go. <gasps> Like, you could just hear everyone almost doing, like, a Rick and Morty, like, oh, oh, no, oh, jeez, you know? <laughs> and, and, but, but it was, like, but it was silent. But you could yeah. still hear it. Like, that's the cinema it's experience the that energy. he wants. He wants that energy, and he feels that it's dying out because people are going to the amusement park. But the problem is the amusement park is actually giving substance. The, the problem is, is that... It's bankrolling everything it's else. It's bankrolling everything else, and that's not great. Um, right, and that's why uh, that's why actors are going to TV because that's where all the character stuff, the smaller stuff that's like twenty million to make, is on AMC, The Walking Dead, bleh, uh, and other stuff. It, it's yeah. that's it's, it's going down the crown that path. on Netflix. It's yeah. The Crown though is fucking expensive as shit. Well, I think they said it was like like fifty something an episode. I was like, the fuck? Because they do their fucking research, which, which they do, they do. <laughs> They I do. love the crown, but, but yeah, like, yeah, the more character stuff, like, I don't know if you've watched Unbelievable on Netflix. No. And it's very, and like kind of bringing this back around to women and women inspiring women is it's about, and this isn't really spoiling anything because it's a true, it's like true crime based and it's uh, women detectives who solved a serial rape in Colorado, like oh, wow. a serial rapist and then connected it back to to a case that had happened in Washington years before wow, where that's sweet. they the they had discredited her and said that she was a liar and everything and then they solved the serial rape and proved that it was all based on um stuff that was done uh investigative journalism and everything but the the series is really great Caitlin Deaver from Booksmart is in it oh, and then yeah. Merritt Weaver and Tony Collette are the two female uh, I know they're the two female detectives and they are so amazing, but and that's you, Netflix, right? That's Netflix. Okay. But you, 
you couldn't make a movie of that. Nobody's gonna, it's, no. that's not going to happen. It's the smaller and it building up and character driven and which is oh sad God, that it's not well the but, acting in it is so good but even then like you couldn't even do like a film series like anymore i think on uh, in the theater because i people aren't just gonna go like late night was one of my favorite movies of the year oh i still haven't seen that one um it's on amazon it's on Prime. amazon right yeah okay. because it's an amazon movie it's not perfect but like i that's something like outside of the marvel movies my favorite movies this year have not been ips which is usually if you had to ask me my answer would always be top 10 like marvel like say some of these other movies didn't come out and be like Spider-Man, Endgame, Godzilla, whatever. Yeah. But now it's just like, no, no, Jojo Rabbit, Late Night, Long Shot. Have you seen Parasite? No. I've you heard it's really good. You need to see Parasite. Eric keeps I... telling me about Happy Death Day 2 as well. Both oh, yeah. I know he two. loved that one. I think he sent both of us like his list a few months ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I think I was, I was like, fucking Happy Death Day? And then he told me, like he probably was just like, it's Groundhog Day but that's, in a horror film. And I was yeah. just like, that's kind of interesting. He's like, but wait, what the fucking sequel? He's like, well, Happy Death Day to You is what it's called, Happy Death right? Day to You is where she realizes she's in a Groundhog Day situation and then she tries to figure out why did that happen in the first place and then it gets fucking sci-fi. And I'm just mm. like, ooh, okay. okay, I'm now super intrigued by yeah. this. I still haven't watched them, in, sadly. But, uh, yeah. But, but again, like, the Spider-Man and Marvel movies are not in my top and actually after I see Knives Out I do not think I they, think they'll get knocked down I even think, further I think they will after you see Knives Out so Charlie's Angels okay can I talk about one random little bit and the and I, first time I thought it was funny and the second time I looked around I realized I'm the only one getting this uh, you probably got it was, was, they kept saying Miss Independent and I was just like are they gonna have the song play because this would really wrap this up and they never did it and I was just like but you keep fucking saying it Jesus Fucking show, play the song. You Just, may not. I that was one thing I was not a fan of in this movie was the music. It didn't bother me. I just, overall, I was just like, eh, whatever. Like, it didn't do anything for me. Like, I n I've never I elevated think, anything. But I don't, I don't, let me put it this way. It didn't distract me from anything for me. Okay. Like, especially during some of the action sequences. Like, it didn't pull me out of it. It didn't push me further into it. It was just kind of, actually, it's kind of like a Marvel movie. It's just kind of there. The early Marvel movies, especially. Yeah. It's, there's no theme. It's just kind of there. Yeah, just um, kind of there. But I just remember every time that they said, like, it's like, oh, Miss Independent, huh? I was just like, oh, because that's the song from the first movie soundtrack with Beyonce and Destiny's <laughs> Child. No, they did not. But they never played it. And I was no. just like, is it because they say Lucy Liu at the beginning? Cameron D and Destiny, Charlie's Angels. Uh, who the fuck? Just skip that part and get to the... Also, they played... Uh, okay, the only song I did like, and I liked how they did it, mm -hmm. was, uh, hold on, I like the song, because it's in every Seth Rogen movie trailer ever made. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Like, Good yeah. Boys, Long Shot. Yes. Uh, the this, Dirty Frank. Yeah. this is used well. Yeah, well, because usually they play, picture this, I'm a bag of dicks. They always put that in every movie, every clip. I will say, Good Boys, they went full tilt, because... Actually, that and Booksmart, they put it in the movie, like, at long chunks. It just yeah. wasn't in the trailer. But, like, every, like, hey, we're guys or girls doing stupid shit, it's that song plays. Because they think they're gangster and they're really not. Mm -hmm. Which, I get that's the joke. But this one, they didn't play any of the dialogue. It was just the fucking backbeat. And I was just yeah. like, that's the probably the best use no. I've had of this in a long time. It's the only song I can tell you about off the top of my head, except for the one no, they did fair. not include. That's fair. But all of the rest of the soundtrack, is shit. I was it's just shit. like, mm, I don't know. It's just okay. But it's not. Anything. It didn't distract me. I will say because yeah, honestly, so so with this Charlie's Angels 2019, I was as we talked about, both of us were reticent to go in. Right, and now I feel sad that I was. I know because I really enjoyed it, and I've been telling like girlfriends all day today i'm like it's not perfect but i kind of loved it like it was so much fun and i really liked i know the, i because my sisters were even kind of i was like you want to go see charles a charlie's angels with you me you want to see charles angels charles angels charles in charge of the angels <laughs> and a bunch and bosley's <laughs> that was bad i'm so sorry take but a I, take a I drink was like, i gotta go watch it because i'm talking about it with nick tomorrow yeah and they were like Oh no, that's fine. You go see because they didn't like the trailer. And then I told my sister Faith today, and I was like, I actually think you would like it. And she's like, Oh, and I was like, It's very much like girl power and taking down the man, and we're not taking bullshit anymore. And so 
I loved that. So, and this is uh, my only complaint with the girl power thing was because I didn't feel it worked. And this is like soup. This is like the opening credits of the movie where they just show all the different all girls the, doing just doing randomly stuff. walking it, it around. Felt, it felt random. No, that did not work well. And and can I also say so? And but everything else though worked great. And also uh, a real quick shout out to Kristen Stewart. Uh, she acted in this movie. She was hilarious. She was well. Okay, I, and in her defense. I have not seen her act in anything except for I've seen her act in Zathura, a few of the Twilight movies. She's not even really in that movie because uh, she gets frozen, uh, and at that point, it's a practical effect. She's the sister that gets frozen in the in the, but in the cryo freeze or whatever. Okay, and so uh, she's. I've seen parts of it, but I'm not worried about. Oh, but Zathura. Zathura is actually really good. Okay, uh, uh, it's a John Favreau movie. If that gives you a little bit more, and that's the movie that got him Iron Man. Yes. Yes, it was because he did a lot of practical effects and he was very big on. He's like, yeah, we have CGI, but I really like to do practical. Matter of yeah. fact, he almost killed uh, Dak Shepard and Josh Hutcherson oh, shit. Uh, in that. Well, there's a scene where another. So the house is floating in space and there's a scene where a giant. Uh, uh, it looks like a harpoon goes through the house and like mm-hmm. suction cups on it and pulls the house towards the, the evil ship. And oh, they wow. actually built a giant harpoon that goes through this, the fake part of the house and they can only do it once. And it, they almost actually hit Dak Shepard and jo- Josh Hutcherson and the oh, other little kid. Wow. Right. Right. But again, it's like, uh, it's fine, but it, it was, it was, it's, it's, it was kind of close. I would say it's closer than Heath Ledger getting blown up in dark Knight, where like he was far enough away where he might just been blown back. Maybe got some like, like yeah. Very minor burns. This was like straight up like no no, they would have been A splintered to death or B run through by a giant fucking hook on a some kind of motor that oh just, my, yeah. just would have yanked him back. Yeah, it would have went through and then yanked him back at uh, yeah, it was all kinds of crazy. But yeah, f- so that is actually good. But she technically the little sister, she gets the older sister gets frozen. Okay. And so she so she's not it's because it's about the brothers. So you've seen Jesus. her in that, you've Sorry. seen her in some of the Twilight movies. She's horrible. Oh, she's in the horrible. Twilight and I saw her movies. in Adventureland. Oh, where where I where seen that one. her big her which everyone was making fun of her at that point for, but her big acting move was the bite my lip. Oh, she used to do the bite the lip thing all the time. And so for me, this was like, who are you? You're I want to watch oh, you in all the things now. Have you seen her do her SNL hosting? Uh, it's in my queue. I haven't watched it. I'm like a few episodes behind. Okay, because she. I heard it was funny. She was good this year, and I'd seen her host like a couple years back when she did it. Yeah. And the, because I was not a fan of her for a long time. And then I kept hearing people talk about like, oh, she's so good doing this indie stuff, and she's starting to get out. She, I did think she was pretty good in Still Alice. I have not seen that one, but I. That Julianne Moore won the Oscar for the movie was just okay. Like, this is where I get sad is that, again, if it's not a big IP movie, I've not seen him as much. This is where A has been good for me is that mm-hmm. i'm seeing more of these movies that i do enjoy and i'm also getting ip burnout because also i think it helped that all the ip movies have been mostly been shit this year minus marvel like yeah. they're not they've not been as great so i was like oh jojo rabbit i want to see that oh i have a list i want to see it i really want to see that oh you haven't seen it yet I oh yeah yeah, yeah. Yet. i want to i Ooh. have advanced passes for it but couldn't go because of stuff, stuff. that was going i got you on and well, I, I I will eventually put that out there to review the movie because I I it's I want to talk about it. Um, but mm. it's uh, but but like but again, that's still considered a smaller movie. Like Late Night's a smaller movie. Long Shot is a it's Seth Rogen and Charlie yeah. Sterling, but it's a smaller movie. Book Smart was a smaller movie. Book Smart is a smaller movie. Knives that. Out was very much a smaller. Well, at least for Ryan Johnson, it was a smaller movie. <laughs> yeah. After uh, Last Jedi, uh, but that's what I'm saying. So like. I feel like ma- all the movies I'm more attracted to this year that I'm also and I'm seeing a lot more has been been the smaller movies yeah. and it, which makes me happy. But I wish people would give Charlie's Angels a chance because I do. I yeah. feel like like going back to the marketing, I don't feel like the marketing was done. I feel like very they gave well. up halfway. Yeah, and, and they kept that. really showing like the design that they did for the Townsend like label or whatever. like Half the, their budget went into designing that, that fucking brand. logo. And it was just like, nobody cares about that Townsend logo. It's not like focus on the fact that this is a movie about like women doing it for themselves. Like honestly, and it's they're able to be spies too, uh, which I, yeah. It gets oh, a little heavy handed in the messaging sometimes, but some I of care. it, some of it. Well, again, to me, the heavy, to me, the heavy handedness was, the random clips of the girls during the opening credits. No, that that I, that, that felt. I was like, I get it. Women really are 
horrible CGI where it like zoomed in really fast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't that be funny if that wasn't CGI and that was actually all like a crane, like a drone shot or something that Ooh, like looked, they were so happy that, that looked they got. so bad. Um, okay. So my other complaint, and this is more on the writing, but, or actually I think they might have, it was an editing thing. Okay. Was the Sir Patrick S- Stewart thing felt when they cut to him in London, it felt very unneeded. And it actually, it confused me because I didn't feel like, because he's been out of the movie. Okay, here's how my writer brain works and my mu- my viewer brain works. Okay, Sir Patrick Stewart's the bad guy. Why are they showing his retirement? That or is he going to die? Or is maybe Elizabeth Banks going to die? Well, she can't die because I've seen the trailer and she does other stuff with the girls. So, but is she the bad Bosley? She, there's a bad Bosley here. And then yeah. he disappears and then he just shows up and has no connection to anything necessarily going on. You know what I mean? Where like... He's mm-hmm. at a clock shop, and I was like, "Oh, is this his new job? Cool." But no, then they... it was the, it was because his retirement gift was a watch. No, no, I get that. I'm talking about like they just he's been out of the movie for like 20 minutes, and and I didn't care anymore. It just okay. felt like, like to me, the more interesting thing would have been that he shows up at the, when the bomb goes off. And then he just shoots her, and you and then you do a flashback to like I was in London. This is they were tracking me. Oh, this is okay. what was going well, or something. And they did. I just remember I go super confused when they cut to London. I was like, mm-hmm. what the fuck's going on here? So are they they're bugging him or is she bugging him? And I know I'm supposed to be confused by that because it's a red herring. Yeah, but I I just felt like you if you took that off, I would have been like it would have streamlined it for me. But See, again, I guess it didn't bother me. Because know, weird. when she was pouring their whiskey at the beginning, yeah, they did focus on that. They focus. I was like, she slipped him something, and I don't know I thought why. That too. I actually thought they were going to. She was going to kill him right there. Yeah, or that was the thing is that someone killed Bosley, and that was what the rest of the movie was about. Yeah, I figure. And so, I'll, to me, I thought they did a pretty good job at making you think, oh, maybe she is the bad guy. Well, they did, but it muddled it. So, like, when she fucking just left them at the mining facility, I was like, okay, I think she's the bad guy. Holy shit. Yeah, when she left but, them behind. But see, that right there, with no radio contact or anything, that's the mm-hmm. important thing, too. Uh, that, But it goes back to me being like, well, what was the fucking point of that scene in the watch shop? Like, what did it really I, show? I think it was to establish doubt in her because you see her talking to somebody else who gives her a tracker that's tracking him in London. Yeah, I just felt like I wish there was something else or something. I, and that's why I feel like it might have been written and they just cut it for time. I feel that's like fair. Yeah, it there could was have been. I don't know. I just like one other tiny scene or something that kind of tied it all in together. Yeah, because for me, it just felt like it was very out of place from what was going on. Like, and I get the logic of it, it was like happening in London. Well, lady with a mysterious voice and mysterious rings who no one recognizes yet. Um, and we don't know is Charlie. I loved that Charlie was a woman with a voice well, she modulation. One, she was one of the original angels. I know. Which, I, which they, I, I was also bummed they that. didn't really officially say that. Like, they let you get, piece it together. But, like, yeah. at, when they show that clip during the end credits, they don't show, they don't show the, the rings being on her hand. You just see her being very obviously. Oh, no, they do. I'm sorry. They show, I'm wrong. She's on, she's the, on the computer. The computer Never modulating mind. her voice. I wasn't paying attention to that. I was looking at the computer <laughs> going, processing data. It's a girl. <laughs> um, not that it's a bad. It was like, it was just more like a, of course it was. And yeah. then I was like, is that one of the, it was one of it the original Jack angels. Smith. Son of a bitch. Um, I should have. Yeah, I didn't recognize that. Uh, no, I just felt like that. It took me out for a second. Uh, like, if they would, I, I don't know. It would just felt very jarring because I me. feel like that was the thing too to kind of set up. You know that Elizabeth Banks Bosley is working for a woman, and at that point they are establishing that it's shady. But it turns out that's actually straight up Charlie, which is cool. I yeah. So the scene with her and her was fine. It was when they just Jumped shifted to, to Patrick Stewart, and they just jump back, and you don't see Patrick Stewart again until the bomb. And that's why I'm just like, the fuck is going on? I was like, that was a weird choice for me. And like, if I okay. had to give any director tips, uh, it's not really directing. It might be more editing or whatever. Is that maybe put that other scene back in if you had it. Yeah. But again, here's the thing. There was probably a test screen where people was like, that other scene confused me. They were fine when he was in the watch shop. And I'm just like, nope, yeah. nope, nope, not for and me. Because this is a big studio movie with it's yeah. Sony, right? Like, I think. Oh, Sony can be bad at this. Stuff. Yeah, they can um, be bad at interfering with things like that. 
And this right here is where Amanda and I are going to take a break and continue our conversation about Charlie's Angels and much, much more next week. If there was anything in this episode you wanted to talk to us about that we mentioned, please email us at goodbadgeeky at gmail.com. We could read your comments on a future episode of the show. The Good, the Bad, and the Geeky is presented by D4K Studios. Nick Argenbright and William Dell are executive producers. Co-producers are Ashley Carlson and Catherine Ranella. Editing and mixing are provided by Orality. Find out how Orality can help you by going to facebook.com forward slash Orality Sounds. The Good, the Bad, and the Geeky is also made possible by our Kickstarter backers. To see our backers, check out our show notes over at gbgpodcast.com. The theme and end credit tracks for The Good, The Bad, and the Geeky is by chiptune artist Hide Your Tigers. You can check out their music by going to hideyourtigers.bandcamp.com. We also featured the track from Futurama, The Devil's Hands Are Idle Playthings, an arrangement by our own Nathan Haley. If you enjoy our program, be sure to subscribe to our show on Apple Podcasts and to leave a review or subscribe to wherever podcasts are streamed. Thanks for listening.